Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Donatello Lulia. I'm a junior scientist at uh, the Advanced Scientific Computing Division of CMPCC. And today I'm going to present uh, um, a brief introduction of the EOPD framework and how it is being used in the context of the eFlogs project. Uh, so, uh, Ophelia is a, is a CMC Foundation research project which uh, basically targets uh, uh, data challenges uh, in several scientific domains with a focus on climate change domain. Uh, although it has also been used in, in other domains, such as in for uh, biodiversity data, uh, seismology, uh, smart cities. And um, it provides a high performance analytics framework uh, joining uh, paradigms and techniques from uh, HPC and big data analytics and implements any memory and service side uh, uh, system for running parallel uh, computation on, uh, on multidimensional data. And uh, it also provides a multidimensional array based storage model, which allows to partition the data and uh, hierarchically distribute these on multiple nodes. And uh, from the user point of view, it uh, provides a data abstraction to uh, show this data as a single uh, as a single data block, which is more, which is more uh, manageable. Uh, before going more into the features of the framework, I just want to give a brief um, uh, overview of the motivation of, uh, of the system. So when we initially uh, started to think uh, to its design, um, the workflow which, we, which was typically used by a scientist was the first uh, search and locate for data on different data nodes, then to download this data on their uh, local nodes and use like desktop based uh, client tools, which were uh, typically sequential or at most with very limited parallel, like sort of uh, thread based. Of course, this worked good with megabytes, but with gigabytes of data, as the increasing time of data uh, starting like 15, 10 years ago, um, made this workflow. Um, not not uh, not scalable anymore. Uh, so with uh, with the field, we decided to move the computation part uh, closer to the to the data center to the HPC uh, computing uh, uh, and storage resources. And so the idea was just to provide uh, the user with very uh, lightweight clients, uh, so it would be much easier to install them and also uh, easier to interact and then move all that uh, computation on the server side where the data is typically already available. So the user will just need to download the few megabytes of the final results. This also allowed um, the system to uh, uh, access a higher degree of, uh, of uh, parallelism by exploiting this HPC uh, system. And so the PDF framework has been designed to be uh, uh, the parallel uh, operators. Um, this slide, uh, there's a brief overview of the main use cases and applications which are targeted by the system. Uh, so it supports uh, uh, a time series an analysis since it provides a, a binary array uh, data uh, data model. Also supports data subsetting and um, data reduction, as well as model intercomparison, multimodal means, uh, um, ensemble analysis, and uh, data provenance. And also uh, through the Python extension, it allows to uh, Create maps by using other other Python models for easy. Um, this slide uh, shows a table of uh, some of the operators which are provided by the system. That there are more than fifty operators for both data and metadata processing, um, and these are classified according to the main type of uh, processing uh, providers. Like there are different operators for uh, I/O operations, like uh, import and export. And the main data format support is the CDF, which is uh, very common in the server scientific domains. It provides also a set and series processing, the reduction subsetting, and also uh, other operators for metadata management, and uh, also for a data ex exploration and, uh, and data cubified system management. And for more interest, there's a link at the bottom of the slides that uh, shows the full set of uh, operators currently provided by the system. Um, so how this uh, uh, ser server-side paradigm works, so this slide tried to uh, uh, give a, um, an outline of how, of how this, uh, this process uh, is implemented. So uh, the framework provides mainly two types of client-side uh, tools, which is the OPDA terminal, which is a 
common like a uh, common line uh, in interface which is similar to a bus shell but is mm, developed to interact with the Ophelia system so it provides all the support all the commands and operators provided by the framework and then there's the file Ophelia interface which is the uh, Ophelia Python bindings which I'll show more in detail in the next slide and thanks to this basically mm -hmm. the user has to type the commands uh, on one of the two clients and then this will be sent to the server which is running close to the uh, infrastructure and the server will then take care of, of dispatching the jobs to, on the HPC nodes and, and then return just a result to the client side, which typically is just a pointer to the data which has been uh, created. And so nothing is, is actually being moved in this, this process. The user just sent comments and everything happens on the server side at the end. They will just uh, get uh, uh, a result saying that the data has been successfully created and that is still on that, on that server side. At the end, if we need the data, this can be moved, for example, for creating maps, but it typically is very small. It's just the final result after this being like subset or uh, aggregated. <coughs> and this is, uh, shows the Biophilia, which is said the Ophelia Python bindings. It provides a high level uh, interface, which makes um, uh, easier for the user to interact with the framework. Uh, so it supports all the uh, commands and op operators provided by the system. So it allows to manage the instance of the Ophelia framework uh, to handle data distribution as well as uh, the parallelism of the execution. And then provides a way to handle uh, data objects, which are actual uh, virtual Python objects, which refer to the data group store on the server side. And also write some methods to uh, convert data from uh, Ophelia to Xarray and Pandas and other um, um, functions to export the data from the from the server and, and move it to the, to, the, to the notebook in order to create maps as shown in this slide here to this uh, export array method channel we'll be able to point. Um, concerning deployment, uh, as Ophelia is as a layer architecture, it can be scaled according to the workload. Um, so this can be run in multi-node set, set up, which is the typical one that we use on HPC and cloud infrastructure, in which we have a single service, service node with the Ophelia server and then multiple compute nodes where the, the computing uh, components of the, of the framework are executed. And this can be easily added and, and uh, removed according to the, to the needs. Or then there's also the opportunity to have a single node uh, set, set up by using a virtual machine or a container. And this is uh, uh, usually um, exploded, might be for training or for testing or for small scale uh, uh, analysis. So, here is one of the uh, data analytics framework, considering the context of the flows for HPC software stack um, and uh, with other tools. And it is used for proposing a computation uh, of indices and metrics uh, on simulation data in two of the uh, project applications, which are the pillar two on uh, the Earth system model, in particular the knowledge extraction workflows uh, for the computation of extreme event indicators like heat waves or uh, cold waves. And also in the pillar three for the tsunami workflow for computation of some, some metrics. And uh, this has been used because uh, it supports uh, said natively the NetCDF data format, which is the format used in, uh, in both cases, which makes it easier to import and export data into an output system. And uh, supports also memory data management, which can be used to um, keep the, the data in, uh, in the memory until it, it then has to be, let's say, stored at the, at the end of the workflow and provide the parallel operator that allow to uh, scale the processing in case of the larger data set. This is uh, uh, the first of the two workflows. This is not the overall workflow of Pillar 2, but it's just the part in which we're using the Ophelia framework. And uh, all these blue blocks represent Ophelia operators. And uh, we start from some NetCDF files, then we have different operations we create, like some, uh, some in-memory cubes, which are these, uh, these orange cubes here. And then at the end, uh, 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 we produce other Next to the files which are which are stored on this um, this this purple uh, part on the right side of the slide 
is executed for each year. And all the operators are can be executed in parallel. And also uh, the pipelines of operators which are independent uh, can be executed uh, uh, in, in parallel as, uh, as well. So for example, of all this, all this uh, pipelines here from multi-operator in the re reduction can be executed concurrently uh, since they have no dependencies. Now to do this, we exploited uh, PyComps. So creating a PyComps workflow, which allows uh, to run the uh, Opedia operators, which are in, independent uh, in parallel. So we have like sequence of Opedia operators, which can be executed concurrently. And then for each Opedia operator, we can run this also in parallel on the on the, the on the data that stored in memory. And uh, this is the uh, workflow executed on a single a year. We can see on the top right side of the slide, the with the the, the, the Pycom scrap. And uh, then starting from, and uh, there's just some some sample code from from this workflow. And uh, we can see on the on the lower part the the output, which is some maps produced by these NCD files. Uh, to run this, we have to do some uh, extension to the of the framework, which have which have been implemented in the context of the Equally Flows project and have been uh, fed back into the main main branches of the of the software. So we created some new function to import multiple files into a single data group for uh, performance reasons to make it this, this process faster, and as well as some in-memory function to support uh, parametrological mean computation. This also to make all the process. Uh, more efficient. Uh, the second workflow uh, concerning the operation that we computed for the tsunami workflows. Uh, in this case, uh, we start from some uh, data pr produced by the tsunami simulation, this scenario file. And this is one for each uh, uh, scenario computed by the, by the simulation. And uh, again, also in this case, we have this blue box, which represents the, the operators, which can be run concurrently and in parallel. Uh, also in this case, we exploited the PyComps to run in par uh, concurrently the uh, blocks, which are independent. And all these, uh, these data groups are basically keep in memory until the final, uh, until all the simulation have, have, have been, let's say, processed. And then just at, at the stage, they will be stored as a, and it's a file. This allows to reduce a large number of uh, IO op operations, especially in writing uh, data. And we just do this at the end of, of the workflow. And again, this is just uh, a snippet from the implementation and the uh, PyComps graph, and we're computing different variables. And what, so in this case, we have to do some extension to the OPDA framework, <laughs> like to better support non spatial oriented data, like those produced by the tsunami. Uh, simulation code. And uh, this is just a summary of the what has been presented. Uh, uh, I will not repeat everything, but just say that uh, we have done a first integration of, uh, of Opedia with, with PyComps using PyOpedia. And uh, the, the first uh, implementation was uh, of this, uh, of each case, it was successful. So we are now working on the full integration of Opedia in the project software stack. And uh, that's all. So I'll take any questions. If, uh...